Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome to, I guess we'll treat this as an announcement. Um, doing another draft league. Yeah, we got the UNPL Academy hosted by, uh, it's Danny Mac and um, I know my boy Kurt's a commissioner too. Shout out to Kurt. One of my good old friends definitely gave me the, uh, the recommendation um, to give them a shot on me. So super thankful to them for uh, taking a chance, let me play. Um, hopefully showing that we still got some juice left. Um, so we ended up with the uh, the first overall pick in the draft. Um, that left me left me with some options for sure. Um, a couple Pokemon that I hadn't used before. Um, those being like Palafin, um, Champel, um, a couple other things like Iron Bundle and stuff were there. Um, but I ended up going with. We went and took. Um, we ended up going with the Chien Pao. Um, obviously, my favorite Pokemon is Weavile. Unfortunately, Weavile may not be the best Dark Ice type on the block anymore. Chien Pao is fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Um, you got, obviously, you guys see the speed. 135, 120 attack, plus the, the Dark Ice combination of um, same type attack bonuses are incredible, incredibly hard to switch into, plus the Sword of Ruin ability, uh, which, if you don't know, reduces defense by 25% of any Pokemon that doesn't have this ability. So anything that switches in is just it immediately taking more damage than it would have. Uh, plus we get things like Sacred Sword to hit steals. Uh, we get double priority in Sucker Punch and Ice Shard, which is, I think, fantastic. Um, and then we get like some stuff like Ruination and, and, and things like that. Like if things really um, can't be touched by us at all. Um, so immediately off the bat, Chien Pao means we have one of the toughest wall breakers in the game. So we're already hard to switch into. Um, but being first pick, I did have to wait a good long time for, you know, the draft to go all the way back. And then all the way back up to me. Um, so at that point, we were kind of just still taking best mon available type of deal. Um, and at that point, that meant that we snagged ourselves in Ursa Luna Blood Moon. Um, another Pokemon I've never used before, another Pokemon I've seen used a little bit. And it has, uh, it looks, you know, I've seen some devastating things come out of this guy. You know, the Mind's Eye ability, um, I can just spam normal type attacks. Um, you know, Ghost can't switch in, nothing like that. As well as um, my secondary type being Ground. Um, obviously the only normal resist is a steel or a rock and ground is weak to, I'm sorry, ground beats both of those obviously. Um, and on the physical, physical side, like if, 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 if your wall is like physically oriented, uh, you're not doing any damage to Ursula. Like this thing is very bulky. It also gets recovery and like moonlight, um, as well as calm mind to, uh, boost up the, the slightly middling special defense, but it also gets priority in like vacuum wave. Um, stuff like, I believe it gets Moonblast and stuff too, so, you know, a couple, a few fringe options there, um, to hit, like, fighting types and stuff like that, but a little, a little slow, so, you know, um, I do want to start drafting some, some U-Turners, some Volt Switchers to try and get these two in more, and, and grabbing ourselves a sneak with the immediate follow-up pick, because obviously it went all the way back, all the way up, and then we had the end of round two and start of round three. So I ended up getting Sneasler at the technical start of round three. Um, Sneasler is, you know, the, the cousin of my favorite Pokemon of all time. So that automatically means he's in as one of my favorites. I love Sneasler, love the design, love the poison fighting combination. Finally on a good Pokemon, you know, I, we've had Toxicroak who is ass for so many years and it's terrible and I would never draft it even though I'm a, I'm a gen four guy. Um, but Sneasler's here, Sneasler's on the squad. Um, Sneasler gets unburdened if we ever need to be faster than 120. If we just need to, to break the fucking roof off, like we need to outspeed some Regieleckies or something. Unburdened, fake out, Sneasler, They're going fucking crazy. Um, we also get Poison Touch, which, um, you know, bulkier things that are trying to switch in on us. Suddenly take an extra 12% a turn, which is nothing to sneeze at. Get it, Sneasler, you know. Um, I'll see myself out. Uh, and then the attack stat is 130, plus we get things like, um, like Sword of Dance, um, to really just send that through the room. You know what I mean? We can either, we can either beat the brakes off a of Registeel with Unburden, or we can Sword of Dance and beat the brakes off a of fucking Reggie Rock or something. You know what I mean? We, we can have it both ways. No Reggie will stand in our way. Um, the defense, obviously, 
nothing there, but that's okay. He's not here for defense. Um, he also is a U-Turner to get in Chien Pal and Ursa Luna more often. Um, like, you know, you're switching in, I, I don't know what you're really switching in. Maybe like bulky psychics, you know, you're switching in a bulky psychic to Seasler and you're getting U-Turned on and all of a sudden you're giving up a Pokemon to Chien Pal. Like, so I like the synergy there. Um, also, Sneasler is a Toxic Spikes Pokemon. So, you know, we can force switches and get up a free layer of T-Spikes if we, if we so desire as well as we get stuff like Taunt um, to stop, you know, things statusing us, putting up hazards if we don't think, if, we, if if I think they're predicting a switch out, we can stay in, we can Taunt, kind of stop what they want to do as well. Um, so definitely not like a Pokemon that only is offensive. Um, Pokemon I'm really looking forward to using. So three for three on Pokemon we've never used before, so we might as well keep that going. And I drafted Ogre Pond Hearth Flame. Um, unfortunately, we cannot tear Ogre Pond. Um, how the terrors work in this league is we have a budget and it consists of lower point total Pokemon. Um, so Ogre Pond was still a little too high. Um, and we are item locked as well. We always have to run the Hearth Flame Mask. We're the only person that gets an Ogre Pond because once one Ogre Pond is off the board, um, all of them are off the board essentially. So we don't have to play against the Cornerstone or the Wellspring Mask. Um, obviously, they would be great against us too so we do avoid that which is nice um and then for stats uh we got 110 speed tier which now we are four picks into the draft and i have a 135 a 120 and a 110 which i think is awesome um speed tiers for me are really important whether you know whether the pokemon's gonna run speed or not i like my opponent having to prep for certain speed tiers i like being able to prep for them prepping for certain speed tiers so it just adds a lot of um a lot of mind games to building and stuff and you know i i like to well never mind. i'm not going to say what i like to do with speed tiers i don't want to give that away but we, you know we'll, we'll save that for another then we'll save that for the team builders um ogre pond gets swords dance it's another u-turner um ivy cudgel is obviously a 100 100 fire type move with a high crit rate so that's you know, that's fantastic just you know i mean click it away something switches in that but they don't live a crit you know it's just you know a lot of shenanigans can go in uh, we also get Power Whip, which is as good as you can ask for from Grass types, uh, as well as Horn Leech and like Leech Seed. Um, and then, you know, if we're against a slower team, we do get Swords Dance. Um, uh, we also, I mentioned it's a U Turner, so we can get U Turn um, going, how we can get in any of our first three big hitters. I think our first four Pokemon may be this may be like one of the scariest four Pokemon traps I've ever If this draft cut off four Pokemon, you know, I might have it in bed. Like, I might, you know what I mean? I might not even need the rest of the team. But we did have to keep drafting. So, such as that, we ended up picking Necrozma fifth. Um, now, Necrozma's Pokemon I've used about... I'm just crunching the numbers in my head. I think it's about uh, 7,000 times and no less. Uh, that's not an exaggeration. Uh, Necrozma was a huge glue Pokemon for me for all of the, um, the Sun and Moon era. As well as Ultra Sun and Moon when it got access to like Dragon Dance and stuff. Um, a Pokemon I'm really, really comfortable with using. A Pokemon that has fantastic stats all over and an amazing, amazing ability in Prism Armor, um, which is just filter, so we just take less super effective damage. So good luck. Um, on top of that, this Pokemon is also our first Stealth Rocker, which we desperately, desperately need. Um, Ursa Luna may get Stealth Rocks. I'm not positive on that, but if he does, great. If not, no big deal. Um, but Necrozma is our first rocker. Uh, Necrozma is also a Pokemon that gets Calm Mind, gets Dragon Dance, gets Iron Defense, um, it has set up all over the board. It also gets its own recovery. It gets Knock Off. It gets Statuses. It gets an, a, a great Psychic type move that can be physical or special. Like this Pokemon does everything. It does everything well. Um, and it's going to hold, hold a lot of matchups together while I'm kind of figuring out the, you know, I mean, getting a feel for all these guys that I haven't used before. Having Necrozma on the team as such a reliable Pokemon for me, I think is going to make playing with the whole team a little easier. Um, yeah, so couldn't can't say enough good about Necrozma. Very excited to have him. It's the first time I've used him in a while. Um, and then to pair up with Necrozma, we ended up taking our Fairy and our first Terra Captain. We snagged Mimikyu. Now, Mimikyu is a Pokemon that mostly Swords dances. But it can do other things. Um, you know, the D Disguise is a fantastic ability. It can get by us any type of hit. I think I think they nerfed it so we take 10% damage now. I mean, I know that was a while ago, but I 
you know, obviously we've been mostly retired for the past couple of years. Um, the, the tarot types we elected, so the rules were your captains ended up being able to tear it into three types, um, one of which had to be a stab. We ended up opting for both stabs because Mimic Q doesn't get too many options, plus ghost, like mono ghost and mono fairy are good typings anyway. Um, we opted for ground to help us deal with steel types that think, you know, they, we don't have anything to touch them besides like drain punch or something. Uh, we can end up like tear ground and we can show them who's really boss, you know, like Mimic Q can lay down the business. Um, we also get stuff like Will-O-Wisp, uh, we get priority, we get leech life, uh, like for like bulk up sets and stuff like that, because we have good special defense, but not good physical defense. So like a bulk up and then leech life or drain punch with our low HP can make us really annoying. Uh, Mimic is a cool Pokemon and as well, uh, continuing to fill out our speed tiers nicely as we have our over 100s pretty set pretty in place so we need our stuff in between like 100 and like the necrozma level now so mimic being 96 uh, is a good start in that direction next up we drafted fortress i might have hit that slide a little too early so some of you guys saw that before the transition that's okay um fortress is a pokemon i've used a billion times uh, it's very you know it doesn't get too much but it does its thing well we needed some more hazards as we only had um necrozma up to this point so I figure why not get a Pokemon that has every hazard um, plus plus removal and removal more importantly in spin instead of defog uh, with a good ability in overcoat. Um, you know, we can like over, or we can, sorry, why did I say overcoat? I'm not sturdy. Nobody fucking cares about overcoat. A good ability in sturdy, um, you know, sweepers get out of hand and our fortress have full health. We can sturdy red card. You know, we can, we can sturdy with like cost staff explosion. We can do a lot of cool things with fortress. Um, as well as it's another Volt Switch Pokemon. Um, so we're now at, at like three, four of those to be getting in Chien Pao and getting in Ursa Luna more often. And I'm really, ho I'm really trying to make those two shine this season. So I really wanna, I really wanna like see what they can do. Cause I'm, I'm very, very excited to use, I'm very excited to use basically everything on our team. But you know, those first couple of picks, man, oh man, am I, am I pumped to see what they can do. Um, but Fortress, very straightforward, good at what it does, doesn't do too many things. Um, and then next, we ended up, so what happened here was my original plan, so uh, uh, maybe around, maybe around the Necrozma pick and mim like Necrozma Mimikyu um, wheel, I ended up trying to plan out the rest of my draft and as soon as I plan out a draft, I get sniped. You know, you can't get sniped if you don't have a plan. I stand by that, I'll die on that hill, it is what it is. Um, so the Appleton got sniped, um, and dragons down there besides Appleton felt really bad to me. Um, so I, I uh, we, we changed the draft plan up. Uh, we made, I think, the back end of the draft a little worse. And when I say a little, I mean significantly worse. But um, I think our top, top seven, top eight are fantastic to the point where like we can contend you know, and if and if and if one of the last couple comes, one of the last couple comes. But let's talk. Let's talk about the pick for a minute. Um, Gudra is a fantastic Pokemon. You know, being a pseudo legendary, it's got tons of stats everywhere. Uh, two two good abilities. I'm not I'm probably not getting hydration off too many times, but um, you know, Sap Zipper to deal with any Grass types, um, as well as Gooey. Not that Grass types are a problem for this team with Chien Pao, Sneasler, Ogre Pond, Fer Fortress. So it's, yeah, we might be we might be a little gooey sometime. Um, you know, our lowest stat being defense, we get stuff like breaking swipe and shilling water now. Gudra gets just about every single attack you can imagine as well. I think he gets body press now too. So like acid armor sets are a lot a lot more uh, viable and like acid armor stuff boosting its physical defense uh, just just makes this Pokemon great. Like it was really the only weakness it had was its physical bulk, and we just throw that out the window. Um, everywhere else, obviously, tons of stats, crazy thick on the special side. Uh, every attack you can possibly imagine. Um, Gooch is going to be a great pivot, um, a great just sponge mon, take up hits, dish them back out, um, score some KOs. Very excited to use Gucci. I haven't used it too much, but I'm, I'm super excited to finally have have the boy on my side for one. Uh, now, after Gudra. Our draft, we, we had about approximately zero points for three months. So we did have to kind of 
strategize. Um, you're gonna notice that I don't have a water type yet, and I don't fix that until my very last pick. And Pokemon costs one point. Uh, leave your guesses in the comments at this point what you think my water type will be. Go ahead. So, anyway, we do pick our water type next. We pick Electabuzz. Um, our third, sorry, second Terra Captain. Um, we opted for the, obviously, we have to have a stab, and it's only electric, so we have the electric Terra on there. We also have the flying to Terra in the face of some ground types. Uh, Dodge and Earthquake, Dodge and Earth Power. Um, and then lastly, we opted for the Terra Ice for when we don't have the damage to deal with said ground types. We can lose our electric types and lose our, our ground, uh, ground weakness. Uh, we don't gain a resistance with ice, but we hit them super effectively with a Terra Blast, with an Ice Punch, you know, whatever whatever we opt for that week. Um, as well as it's, uh, it's, a, it's my final speed tier above 100 as it's in between Mimikyu and... Um, Mimic Q and Ogre Pong. Um, Electabuzz got some new toys this gen too. Uh, we got Trailblaze, we got Bulk Up, we got Knock Off, we got Supercell Slam. Um, so some, some cool new moves that I definitely think adds another layer to Electabuzz that previously wasn't there. Um, Electivire has gone up points for all that, uh, for all those new moves. And I don't really know, I don't really think Electabuzz has changed too much like nobody maybe nobody's looking at it because electivire is the evolved form but i think there's some potential here that could be pretty cool i'm, I'm definitely excited to use the electabuzz um and then like bulk up and stuff with with like a violite uh you know like we could have we can be surprisingly bulky um you know do do some shenanigans like i'm excited look at them do yourself a favor and go go google search the electabuzz fight zone Go listen to that and tell me you are not excited for Electabuzz to to six o somebody at some point this season. Like, you know, it's it's gotta have you. You listen to a fight song, you just get pumped. You you can't you can't help yourself. So after Electabuzz, um, I drafted. Um, I don't I don't really know. Murkrow, I don't know if Murkrow's making it through through the season. Uh, he's okay, I guess. The main selling point of Murkrow is prankster. Um. You know, we lost Defog, so it's a shame. We still get things like Feather Dance. Uh, I think we get stuff like Thunder Wave. Um, Murkrow is more or less... Murkrow's just here. Actually, as I talk about Murkrow, I'm looking at the tiers and seeing what is in Murkrow's tier so I can look at dropping it. But... Eh, probably not. But, you know, what are you going to do? Mur Murkrow's here. Murkrow's godly on the team. Mur Murkrow, think of Murkrow as, like, he's a, he's a two-way guy. You know what I mean? Like, he goes between the main roster and the G League. You know, you know, 10-day contract type of deal. Um, you know, he's just, you know, he's just kind of balling out. You're seeing what he's made of. Um, so then, we had one pick left. Well, we had, what, two points left at this point. Um, and then, we still needed our water type. It, it came down to two mons. It was between, like, War Turtle and Primplup. Um, basically, do I want? Oh, I didn't switch the slide. Oh yes, I did. Never mind. It worked. So it was basically between: do I want uh, another rocker or another spinner? Um, and I think I, op I think obviously I opted for the spinner. I thought it was a little more important, as well as War Turtle is going to be our third and final Terra Captain with the types Water, Grass, and Poison. Water because we have to have a stab. Grass, um, we can ditch our two weaknesses and turn them into resistances and then poison maybe to dodge like a toxic um war turtle is slightly better than i will ever give it give it credit for Eviolite light makes it kind of bulky against like waters and stuff like fires um as well as i i probably wouldn't have drafted it if it doesn't get flip turn but it does so you know we just come in take a hit flip turn out and, and, and put ourselves in a better position. Um, flip turn is huge for me because if this thing didn't get flip turn, it would just be set up fodder for days and days and days. Um, you know, and we get stuff like roar, we get stuff, you know, we get rapid spin, um, we get stuff like chilling water to help us tank a little bit better. And you know what? This is the second rain ability. So so maybe, maybe the rain dance will, will come, you know? Now that I'm looking at it, we got we got the Foratress to, to, for the fire weakness. We got Hydration Gudra. We got Rain Dish War Turtle. And you know what? We got Prankster Murkrow. That's what it was for. The Damp Rock Prankster Murkrow. You know what I mean? This is a rain team. It's not a good rain team, but it's a rain team. I promise. You know? And War Turtle gets Shell Smash. So, you know, I set up the rain and, and we smash with, with the little man. 
you know, you better watch out. You know, you better watch out. Maybe I'll drop War Turtle for, for Wilmer. You know, the mascot pick, because Wilmer is Wilmer's that guy. He always has been. You, 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 you guys just haven't seen it yet, I promise. Um, either way, that is going to conclude our draft analysis. I have mixed feelings. I like the team. I think our utility is slightly lacking. But I've drafted worse teams. You know, I've drafted teams with, like, Armaldo as my only spinner, and I don't bring it. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, I, you know? Things have been worse, you know. It's it's been rough out here, but I don't think this is that rough. I think our again, our top eight Pokemon can compete with any any team of six. I think uh, they're real versatile, can do a lot, especially things like Necrozma and Gudra can do a whole lot um, of different things um, pretty well. Um, our first week is going to be again uh, Eli and the. Abominable Darmanitans, and he's got a scary squad on him. So I will see you guys back for the team builder. Um, we'll go over our week one prep, my thoughts, and why we are bringing what we are bringing. Um, so I'll catch you guys back here for that. Take care, and I hope you're excited for the UNPL. Peace.